Well, here's a TR4C that I'm going to work on for a buddy. And um, just want to make a couple of notes here for Mark. And uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, try to get it tracked down here. But it seems that there is no power output. That's the chief complaint. However, there's also a problem with the receiver. There's a huge difference between upper and lower sideband background noise. So I don't know <clears throat> if that's simply a, a carrier oscillator adjustment that's way out of whack or if it's got bad crystal filters, IF filters, which would be a real bummer, or what the deal is here. But anyway, we'll deal with that later. First thing is first, let's get some, try to get some power out of this thing. And um, I took the tubes out. I'm assuming the tubes are good. I think Mark said that he checked them and they were all okay. Um, but I had uh, wildly varying plate current with no power output and uh, crazy by all kinds of crazy intermittent weird stuff going on in the transmitter for the brief amount of time that I had it hooked up. So let me show you what I've found so far. Other than the fact that the little red thing here is missing on the front and it's missing the insert, but that's no big deal. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, so I took the tubes out, took the RF cage out, and um, this little bugger right here is a uh, coupling capacitor. That's what blocks the DC from the output connector and allows whatever frequency you got the transmitter set up for to pass through the uh, tank circuit and so forth and uh, you know resonate and eventually end up at the TR relay and the output. This coupling capacitor, I don't know if you can see it, has a crack across it. And we got a little focus problem going on here again. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but right in here there's a crack right across there. And it does not read good for ESR. I checked some other caps of the same value, and they should be up around 50 ohms. Um, this one is infinite. So uh, that capacitor, which is a high voltage capacitor, obviously needs to be replaced. So that's number one. Uh, let me uh, pause this a second and flip it upside down and show you another issue. Um, in the final compartment. Okay, here's the final compartment back here. Let me try to get some light on this here and uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, this final section of the band switch right here with the ceramic um, wafer uh, as opposed to the phenolic wafers. This is what switches in the, t the uh, proper tank coil for each setting of the band switch. And um, we got a problem, Houston, we got a problem here. Um, let me reorient this a little bit so I can show you. Okay, we'll try this. Um, on this side of the band switch here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this connection right here is missing. It's blown away. Um, and the tab is missing. It's not making contact. And that is one of the 10 meter positions right here. You see there should be a little overlapping tab like on this one over here. And it's not there. It's gone. And if you turn the band switch you can see a big hole in the wafer here. Um, and not only that, but if you look, and I can't really tell without taking this thing uh, completely out, but I believe that the common section, these are bridged together, the front and the back wafers are kind of like parallel bridged together. But way back in here, way back where I can't really get a probe or see much back here, is the common connection. And I do believe that that is bad. So if that is the case, that and the uh, bad coupling cap would certainly be responsible for no power output. Yet, um, you know, there being an indication of some plate current. 
So I'm going to disconnect this later. Pull all these uh, big wires off of here. And remove this ceramic wafer and see what we're looking at here. But I think, <clears throat> and I kind of hate to say it, but I think we're going to need a new ceramic wafer um, and a new um, coupling cap. To get the power from the plates of the tubes through the uh, Pi network and into the TR relay, which seems to be just fine. Um, and the other issue, I'm hoping will not be the case, but the issue with the poor receiver um, pitch, I'm hoping is not one or both of these crystal filters, because they're available, you can get them but they're expensive. Um, I replaced a set of those in a TR4C for my buddy Gary, KG4D, um, a couple of months ago. And, you know, he spent a lot of money for the in-red crystal filters, but it all worked out good. So, Mark, that's where I'm at. Um, and I thought it'd be easier to make a short video and explain it to you rather than try to put it in an email, so... We'll, uh, we'll catch up with you in a little bit and talk about this some more. Other than that, everything looks to be in good shape, but it's got some significant issues here. So, um, there you go. Okay, that's it for now. We'll uh, catch you guys a little bit later. Keep on tinkering. <laughs>